Dependable, Kyle. I'm not alone at the PCD. Why not? More the merrier. Don't for God's sake go out with it empty. They'll think you're a shoplifter. I know very little about you, except that you are PCD. And that you are tired of treading on people. And that you have certain ideas. Ideas that PCD have no time for. It wasn't my idea to meet here, by the way. It was Maud's list. No names. Huh? Oh, sorry. Appropriate, though. Empty shelves, ration cards. I take it you know my function in the PCD. Your rations, Inspector. I'm a nutritionist. You were working in the Ministry of Food until the policing of the black market became more important than nutrition. And they moved you over to the PCD. And the way to stop the black market isn't to catch black marketeers. It's to see to it that there's enough of everything to go round. I put up a scheme for the intensive production of vegetable foods and a campaign to win over the public. They took me for a vegetarian nut. Rather like vegetarian nut. My campaign isn't based on nuts. Soya beans and comfrey. Lots of protein. There is an alternative, of course. Oh, yes. Get rid of the whole stinking tyranny. You do know we're being watched, don't you? My lot? No, no, no. Store detection. Why don't you get some cooking oil and I'll get some fish? They might think we're a right pair. You know, since I became Home Secretary, I have constantly reminded myself of the need for tolerance, even towards those whose antisocial behavior most of us find it hard to condone. Here we go. But what I see today, so many families, young children, going without the basic necessities of life because of the black market, because their fathers sell their food ration for extra cigarettes and liquor, because greedy and selfish operators line their pockets. Soft sell in the iron fist. Gives me a great Wait for pain. it. Uh, what's she leading up to? The compulsory removal no of black marketeers' of taste buds. They don't eat the stuff, Tom. They merely flog it. And I have no alternative but to instruct the courts to impose exemplary penalties. My idea. And they're still chilling the damn woman. Because they're scared of us. Take a bow. We will cleanse our land of this vicious weed. Fed on the shortages caused by her lot. I ask you to study this picture and think. He has eaten no meat for six months. Neither has he seen anything of his sugar or butter ration. Well, she's right to crack down. His father sold them for cigarettes. No one's better at turning Thank live you. telecasts from the house into government propaganda. That child's father has been dealt with. How can you defend him? You're a child yourself, Jack. He has been Jack. dealt with severely. Good. Well, you don't have to be either Kate or a Christian to accept that the black market is he evil. He was a small time off. Even I'd put them inside. Selling his own family's rations and those of some of his friends now being questioned by RPCD. But you know, Jody I wants to show you something. Sure that others in this oh, darling, I'm sorry. The Mr. Biggs. What is it? Hmm? Are brought from under their stones. 
the wealth that has been gained by selling goods in short supply. Jody was showing you something. Don't ever come here on your own at night. The park's a jungle now. Some have cash, others weapons for mugging those with the cash. In the PCD, we turn a blind eye, let them get on with maiming, killing each other. My bodyguard. They'll assume you're also from the department. Why haven't you cleaned it up? Uh, what Scarden calls our fatted pig policy. When we do move, we'll have the biggest snatch yet. In terms of numbers, that is. The Mr. Biggs don't come here. Never thought I'd be grateful to see the PCD. <laughs> He's okay. Buying or selling tonight? What have you got? Coffee, milk, chocolate, real cigarettes, grade A salmon. Salmon? Somebody must have done a warehouse. I can get you five kilos now. Ooh. What else? Any continental cheese? Brie, camembert, Danish blue, half a kilo of each. I can get more if you want it delivered. Uh, no, no, no deliveries. After ready now, the rest COD tomorrow night. That'll be 120 Anglo dollars. You must like cheese, mate. We've not met, have we? Alan Msawi, East African trade delegate. A pleasure, Mr. Msawi. Honoured, ma'am. Man. If you'd been white, I'd have had a go. It's Home Secretary or Kate. Your controller comes here a lot these days. Say what you think. Did you know he'd be here when you asked me to lunch? One can't come here without finding him entertaining some third world envoy. I asked him to find out how many of our people, politicians and civil servants, are asking for visas to these sunbelt lands. Has he done anything about it, you know? If he hasn't, would you like me to? <laughs> you mean he hasn't? I did a preliminary check yesterday. Just in case? I thought perhaps you'd raise this. And you didn't think it necessary to remind him? No. But then if he'd have taken it in his stride. I admire his professionalism. Are you a game person, Miss Blake? Or do you prefer sturgeon? Tiddlers! I mean, this mate of yours is a shark. He's got his jaws into whole cargoes. Petrol, food, booze. You expect me to nanny him? He gets out over 30 illegals a month from Southampton alone for us and never charges a cent. He can afford to, can't he, on his profits? Look, nobody, not this lousy tyranny, not the PCD, not Scarden, not Blake, and certainly not you, with your lily-white conscience, are going to do him. All right. So what's the name of this crook with a halo? Nothing doing. Dave, whose side are you on? Me? Us. Look, he's my contact. I have to warn him in case these public park minnows lead the PCD to him. And I can't help him unless I know his name. I mean, what do you want me to do? Apply to the PCD for a list of all the Mr. Biggs? Why not? You're trained to dig dirt. Well, I don't think the PCD would have a nice, tidy list of about 500 names. Why not? They've got a computer.
Then you shouldn't be going into that hell's kitchen every night on your own. What? Not to pick up stories for the foreign press? I belong tonight, just in case, with my lady's hockey team. Our members shouldn't do that. Frustrated autograph hunter, Mr. Scarden. Cult of personality trip. You'll have me blackballed. Oh, you could blackball the controller of the PCD. Oh, indeed. Did Kate, our mistress, mention faceless? She's not best pleased that your plan sprang their trap on him. Not Brandy. I got some lovely goods tonight. We'll come back in a minute. PCD, identity card. Get it. You sound like the PCD. We have to know in case we have to tell somebody to duck. Do you see this? Do you know what it means? Well, it shows where it came from in darkest Africa, mate, and the consignment number. How do you know that if you're not PCD? This is a newspaper office. Take it, we know. And if they know the consignment number, it's a short way to Tipperary before they also know who put this stuff on the market over here. Now, this must have been hanging around for a bit, because marked tins like this are not being allowed down the line to you tiddlers anymore. Do you understand? Where did you get it? Just fell out of a cocoa tree, hmm? He says he doesn't know. Back home, lad. He's not going anywhere yet. They've taken his ID card. They take your real identity card? Don't be silly. Do you have your real identity card? this mate of yours warn him. After all, what's good enough for the tiddlers, I suppose, is good enough for the shark, remembering all the time that we are heavily tapped. No. Hello? Keep your head down. Same place, half an hour. OK. What's your code? He has three hours. I just hope this mate of yours doesn't panic and do something daft. He'll not even blink. And don't you dare lay a hundred mile trail right back to my contact. I'll see you. See ya. Oh, hey. It's OK, I made a note. Made a note? What am I looking at here? I mean, after all, there's nothing of mine in the paper. Oh, well. 
did you just want to see who was with me? You are a home affairs correspondent of this rag, Kyle. The home secretary's all over the page. Oh. <laughs> oh, she'll love that lap dog reporting. Makes her sound like Marie Curie and Florence Nightingale all rolled into one. Stand by for your ration of happiness pills, Tom. What the hell is this? That is a tin can. One of Kyle's turncoat moles in this department caught red-handed. He was with Kyle in the black market ghetto in the park tonight. McCray could hardly believe his luck. Good for McCray. Fine officer. Comprehensive one. Bright girl. Mr. Scarborough? Come in now. Oh. Certainly. It says he was a vegetarian. Vegetarian with an only child at Comprehensive One. Shouldn't be much of a problem. <coughs> ah, Greville, come in. Do sit down. I understand you've not yet dined this evening. No, not yet. No, neither have we. Uh, get the restaurant to rustle something up, would you, Miss Blake? They do a superb steak tartare. Will you try one? No, thanks. I'll eat when I get home. I forgot. You're a vegetarian. I'm allergic to meat. Oh, really? Hello? Who is it? Please say who you are. I can hear you. Hello? 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 Was that him? Was it Daddy? No, darling. Could you go back to bed? Who is it that keeps calling Mummy? I don't know, darling. I, I really don't know. Must be something wrong with the telephone, I think. Should I check with the operator? No, you won't. You go straight back to bed, otherwise you'll never be ready for school in the morning. It could be that you met by chance. I didn't know it was Kyle. And I should like to telephone home. I've said, Mr. Greville, my men are looking after that. McRae says that he's been watching you for some time. And that he saw you and Kyle talking in confidence. Every meeting in that ghetto is in confidence. Our infrared cameras tell great truths, Mr. Greville. It's the biggest thieves' kitchen since the 19th century. If I were to That's why you were there, in collecting intelligence. What's not clear is your link with Kyle. He said he... he had information. You were doing all the talking. I was advising him about his... about our safety. There was violence in the air. Well, you weren't exactly sent naked into the front line. You had men with you. Not many. Even McRae's enforcement section took a pasting. How many would be enough to hold your hand? You join me there next time. I didn't hear that. I said you come down there. You were caught red-handed with Kyle, a known enemy of this department, a dissident. You can say you weren't passing official secrets, not seditiously Would you mind taking undermine... that away? Let's send him home. He needs to think things over. We'll talk again. You're over, Mort. You need a good night's sleep. You're free to go home. I know you're high on psychology, Miss Blake. Do not mind, McCray. You could keep him in an abattoir till he snapped. That wasn't my intention. Telephone surveyor. Lynn Blake, I want a round the clock phone tap on Peter Greville, staff number 1492836M. Staff, sir? Now, thank you. He'll phone Kyle. 
And then there's always Comprehensive One. Yes, indeed. Comprehensive One. Concern, Jody. I've been trying to understand why your chemistry results are so disappointing. I don't know how much homework you've been doing. It's my worst subject, Miss Dalton. Mm, and it should be your best. Why? Well, your father did uh, <laughs> rather well in the subject at Sussex. What's that got to do with it? Chemistry was his best subject. It's my worst. It doesn't worry you. Why should it? I'm on top in maths and physics. Doesn't it worry your father? I don't think so. Does he know you neglect your chemistry homework? I don't neglect it. I do it to the best of my ability. Well, doesn't he offer to help? Well, doesn't he? No, he doesn't. Why not? Because I never ask him. Cheeky little hoyden. Why don't you ask him? Why don't you ask him, Jodie? Miss Dalton will get to it in time. All the lady needs is time. I don't ask him because he works hard and gets home late. Oh, so you... You don't talk to each other much? Oh, yes, especially at weekends. He's fun. <laughs> he works in the public control department, doesn't he? Oh, come now, Jodie, he does, doesn't he? Jodie. I don't think this has to do with my homework. Are you ashamed he works for the PCD? Not exactly ashamed, no. What then? You don't like the PCD? You don't like what your father does? Does he? It's normal for girls of your age to be proud of their fathers. I am proud of him, and you shouldn't say otherwise. I didn't say you weren't proud of him. I'd not dream of saying such a thing. I'm concerned about you, Jodie. Now, when you say not exactly ashamed, what do you mean? May I go now, Miss Dalton? Hmm. When you've told me what you meant. Jodie? I really must have an answer. She means she hates our guts, Miss Dalton. That's what the little hussy means. Lost your tongue, Jody. Only I hear from Mr. Hatton that in your last week's essay you said you wanted to be a research engineer. In America? Yes. And you said that the ten years rule should be relaxed so that graduates could leave this country to work abroad whenever they choose. Yes. Well, aren't you a little young to be making a point like that? Whoever put that idea into your head? I'd like to go home now. Jody. You do realise that this is probably the best school in the whole country, with some of our most gifted children as pupils, with many more wanting to get in. It does not mean, Jodie, that once in here you can rest on your laurels. There are many girls, both able and longing, to take your place. Mine? Anyone who doesn't seem up to it. And I don't mind you telling your father he might be a little more helpful with your homework. Our friend, Jim Kyle. You must forgive my puritanical friend, Charlie. He doesn't like the way you made your fortune. Which one of the whites? You bugged? Clean as a virgin. You followed? Will you take me for some one-eyed fox with a limp? I might have sympathy with a creature like that. What then? Your face is stiff as a board, Kyle. Shall I crack a gag? No wonder he's a scribbler. <laughs> Friend, did you say? I thought you'd have rings on your fingers. Diamonds for buttons. Well, I know when to look like a mass-produced citizen. Friend. We think they picked up a lot like this. Last night. Yes, one of mine, all right. 
They want to meet there. You said he could nuzzle out the info. Not without knowing your name. My name's Charlie. Charlie what? Or don't you know? It's Charlie, that's all. You are sure about this scribbler? Look, stop holding your nose, Kyle. Charlie's got out more than half of our illegals and never charged a sou. And he climbed his way up from the gutter to the throne via the black market. Well, if I hadn't, someone else would have. Oh, no, that's the thing the PCD are always saying. Oh, listen, I've, I've come here to do a deal. Not listen to the Archbishop of Canterbury. Right. Sermon over. You've got a deal. When I know your name. It's up to you, Charlie. You guarantee? Yeah. Charlie Graydon. Charles Wilhelm Graydon. Wilhelm. My dad was a German soldier. When he was a POW here back in 45, his family in Amber were cleaning out for everything they got just to get a few things on the black market for the kids. Those uh, occupation troops, they, they drove an hard bargain. My granddad gave a camera and his dad's gold watch for three bars of chocolate. So I'll soon before I know what's up because I might want to depart from this lovely land pretty too sweet. Yes, I would imagine you've got uh, quite a lot of loot stashed away to get by on. Yeah, plenty of reverend. Well, if you're getting the hell out, you won't be shifting any more illegals for us, will you? This is for services rendered, Kyle, not for those expected. Listen, what did you... All right, clear yourself of the face of London till tomorrow, all right? Well, I don't exist. My ID card says I'm a dead man anyway. back of your head. Are they still there? I can only see two now. And you haven't even looked at your homework yet. I don't intend to. If you want me out of the room, just say so. I'm not a baby. It's not as if I don't know who those awful men are out there. It can't be two people at once, though. One more, and it would have been go to jail. <clears throat> no chance. Oh, I don't know why they haven't brought this game up to date. They could put in some new ones, like detained by the PCD, out of game, couldn't they? Out with it, love. What's up? You're on chance. Right. If that were mine and the game were up to date, it would probably say lose place of comprehensive one. Back to go. What does the card say? It says nobody's going to hurt you, darling. Not true, Daddy. Come on, stop talking in riddles, Jody. Jody, what's all this about comprehensive one? I might have to leave. Leave? Because in one subject I'm dragging a bit. <laughs> oh, but that's no reason, darling. Miss Dalton says it is. Jodie, just tell me what's been going on. Jodie? Kyle. We must meet. It's urgent. Well, what's happened? No. No, don't tell me. We must meet. Look, I'm giving you no more information. 
I am not paid by your lot. You were right to hang up. There's a round-the-clock phone tap on him. Why the warning? Personal. PCD doesn't usually breed warm and loving ladies. I wasn't bred there. They'll soon have Greville talking his head loose, giving them enough rope to hang you twice over. And I am too good for such a fate, hmm? Scarden isn't good enough for such a triumph. Oh, what a pity. I was hoping your concern would be human rather than professional. He could be persuaded to pull back. He's been making a habit of dining with foreign envoys in the leaders' club. Really? You think he wants to hear people screaming for mercy in languages other than English? He's looking for holes that he might use one day to leave the sinking ship. I'm sure your child will be allowed to stay on to acquire all the advantages of an education at Comprehensive One. All I'm asking is that you sign this declaration that Kyle was pressing you to pass on official secrets. And we're certain that he was. I'd like to meet this child of yours, Greville. It must be quite a character. God! <laughs> PCD. I'm sorry, sir. Did you know Jensen? One of our culture inspectors. Got onto an illegal broadcasting group. Not only didn't he turn them in, he joined them. Our psychiatrists are doing all they can for him. A very difficult case. No needle marks, Greville. It's all pills now. Come on, I'll show you to your cubicle. his allergy, I hear the force feeding him with meat. He's in a corridor ward, first floor, west wing. Plan of centre nine. For what it's worth, I can get messages through to him that the cuckoo's nest is impregnable. Except to a commando unit. I'll have to use one of those. I'll try something else first. Luck be with you. After all, Herbert, I did save your life. All you have to do is to press a button. In five minutes, you'll be out of that black hole. Two. And press it. I could press a button and have you held in two seconds for corrupting a senior member of His Majesty's service. And why don't you? Too piffling. I want your gallows high, Kyle. I want him under the Official Secrets Act and you under the same act and the Enemy of the State Act. That sounds very comprehensive. He'll soon be yapping his head off. We'll have enough to confirm that you've been transmitting the poison he's been feeding you into anonymous pieces in the underground, beg your pardon, gutter press and foreign papers that have it in for us. Then for you, it's life or treatment. Do be careful. I'm told the new Home Secretary is neither a mug nor a lady. She won't pick up your IOUs as the last one did. Non-citizen, you remember? Do you know what your lot were calling you after that little incident? Hippo. Huh? <laughs> Hippo's garden. 
Well, you must admit you are rather heavy on the hoof. You both belong to the endangered species. Whistle while you may, Kyle. Are you recording this? Oh, well, I mean, of course you are. However, there will be nothing on your tape. I am now going to switch this little machine off, because I don't think you will want to continue recording when you hear what I have to say next. No. What put the wind up, you Herbert? Sort of retribution? Or the Human Rights Tribunal to come? I want a total surveillance blackout in this office. When every arm your bully boys have ever twisted, when every groin they've ever kicked, when every pill they've ever shoved down dissidents' throats will be taken into account. It'll be your turn to learn all about the long nights then, won't it? So do Don't you... beat your chest out yet, Kyle. Photocopy. Others in safe hands. You don't wine and dine 11 foreign envoys in one month just to show them the paintings of eminent Victorians. Why then? Boat holes, entry visas for when you skip. We have a law to protect public officials from criminal slander. And invoke it. After all, I'm already here in the slaughterhouse. Perez of Cuba, Msawe of East Africa and the rest. What were you doing, Herbert? Talking about cigars and cocoa. I have interviewed some of them. I made copious notes, copies in safe hands. Now, I don't usually talk about my researches to home secretary. We're almost rid of the gutter press. You've descended from the gutter to the sewer. It's the sewer press next. Don't take your mind off the Human Rights Tribunal for one minute. It's going to make the Star Chamber look like the Salvation Army. You know your right to look for escape, Adjis Herbert. The rodent operators are on the march. You haven't got a word out of any of those envoys. Bet on it. Give me Alan Amsawi, East African Trade Delegation. Good day. Garden. Herbert? Alan Alan. I'd like to meet. the one about the muck car driver and the school teacher. I was the muck car driver, mate. <laughs> I was. <laughs> Alan, I'm grateful to you for coming in so early. No sweat. It's on my way in. Do you know the journalist, Kyle? Maybe. I shouldn't, but yes. You met him recently? He was trying to contact me yesterday. I'm not sure about what. Alan, I never asked you for an entry visa to your country, did I? You did not. I thought I didn't. Though it would be reassuring to think I was welcome. Whenever you like. Thank you. It never was raised by me, was it? You have my word. And anyone else who asks? None of their business. Are you sure? Just stop twitching. Kitchen first, then main block.
I didn't think you knew him that well. Did you? He was a colleague. One pays one's last respects, even to those who prove inadequate. Peter Greville was a man of courage and character, an individualist, a talented man of science who worked with a fine public spirit on problems of nutrition. A sensitive man whose mind, the state, the PCD chose to misapply. And then, and then to disorientate, to tear asunder, to be the against people of our people. PCD helicopter. PCD photographer. Uh, that's no good. Foreign newsmen. Mr. Scarden. We've got quite enough of him. All the same. Your lady friend. She's not my lady friend. Anyway, she's only just joined the PCP. That's enough, isn't it? Yes. She has to be filed. She has to, yes. <laughs> <laughs> 